For joining me, Joe Mazzola with a big picture take on the situation on a week that was holiday short and a pack of data and also with the all-time highs, which matters the most, uh, Joe. So uh, still we have some uh, churn underneath the surface, right? We've got some dispersion, but at the top line, mm -hmm. things just keep working for the indexed investor right now. Keep on chugging. That's what they're doing, Oliver. I mean, uh, yeah, these markets, I think we've set three new highs this week, 34 for the year in the S&P 500. Um, and I mean, does it really matter how many of these generals are leading the charge? I think eventually it will. I don't think it matters this week, of course, but um, I think going forward, you know, earnings are are, are going to be maybe the telltale sign whether or not this, this can continue. And I say that just because there's a few things that I'm seeing. You know, you mentioned the churn below the surface, which which I think is important. Um, we've got some overbought uh, signals in uh, the NDX and the SPX, so the S and P five hundred and, and the Nasdaq, both looking a little overbought. But you know, Oliver, I'll, I I always stress this. I, I look at RSI not necessarily when it's overbought, but when it's rotating back down below. That's when I care about it a little bit more. And then the other thing, um, you know, that I'm really been kind of focusing on is just what we're seeing in the options market. And that is just a significant amount of upside call buying. And, um, you know, like I said, it, as long as it works, it's great. Uh, but if we start to see something in the earnings cycle where some of these big tech names that are showing these positive call skews uh, aren't meeting or beating or uh, forecasting, you know, big revenue and, uh, and earnings gains, you know, at, at some point, you're going to have to pay the reaper. Yeah, this is uh, earnings season uh, coming up, right? I mean, that's kind of where yep. uh, we're going to see what uh, these uh, stocks that have been making highs post NVIDIA really are made of mm -hmm. because uh, they have been more valuation driven than the hardware trade. And I think that's an important distinction. So the pressure is a little bit more on when those uh, PEs have risen substantially, like Apple, sure. 100%. This is all PE expansion that we're seeing on a company like Apple. Or even even Tesla this week. Or I mean Tesla, 100%. What, totally. What, what was good what was good news in the Tesla report? Uh it beat by 1%, but yet sales are still down. And, and I'm not talking earnings, I'm talking, you know, monthly sales, right? Or quarterly sales, excuse me. So it's, you know, you had the the beat expectations by 1%. The stock basically rallied uh what 20% in a week. Um it look, they, like I said, I'm not saying that uh, it can't continue because when you're in these kind of a slow holiday and then slow summer markets, uh, yeah, these, these these ramp ups they can continue, they can move forward. Um, but you know, as a as a prudent investor, I, I think at at some point, you know, maybe writing some calls up above here, taking advantage of that call skew. Like I said, we're looking at stocks like uh, Google, AMD, Meta, where all where this upside call skew is really making it beneficial for people to sell into some of that strength. If you're already long the shares, I'm not saying go short these calls, but if you're already long the shares, or if you want to do like a stock replacement type strategy where, you know, maybe you peel back on some of those shares and buy call spreads as a replacement to take some of that money off the table, you still have a, a, a bullish long position. The difference is the amount of money that's tied up into a call spread versus owning 100 shares is substantially different uh, when you're looking at stocks with, uh, with you know, with the, those nominal prices where they're at. Yeah, well said. Uh, Coffee at the top of the show was uh, talking about something similar, uh, which is trying to take advantage of the, you know, the skew within the options that are getting pretty extreme uh to your point though it's uh, uh hard like on a, a price level on a stock level to, to bet directly against these companies but now that we have sort of melted up and things like rsi have gotten to overbought we at least have some now kind of standard to know to measure when we cool down so these are things yeah. that you know, are kind of extreme momentum things that you don't want to fade, but they do kind of tell you that when they break, that can kind of be a more reliable sign than just kind of trying to, you know, sure. stick your finger up in the wind. Yeah, and there's other opportunities out there, right? I mean, the hard part with this market, and I think this has been what has challenged investors all year, is you look at the index level, and you, and there's very, very little volatility at the index level. But, it, you know, as you were mentioning in the start of the segment, there's a lot below the surface. And investors say, well, wait a minute, if I don't own these stocks, I can't participate. 
there's some truth to that, but there will be a time, you know, where some of the rotation starts to occur. I think what's difficult right now in this market is until you get a green light from the Fed that they are going to start cutting. And, and I did see that probabilities for the uh, September cut, I think, ramped up to around 75 percent today. So, you know, those are moving in, in the right direction. But until you really start uh, to see that in place, it's probably going to be a trade where you know you're looking at those factors that that we talk about constantly the the strength of the balance sheets the the profitability the interest coverage ratio what do all those have in common well they 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 kind of fit within that 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 little tight glove of those of those stocks and yes there are other opportunities out there and maybe now is the time to start peeling into that i'm not saying you know look at the russell right now because i think there's just too much technical damage there but i do think that uh you know there are some sectors that haven't participated that might surprise to the upside uh, during the earnings cycle like that uh earnings gonna be key uh that really begins next week so there we go set up appreciate it joe mazzola have a great weekend sir